and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking in depth at how to make this bed pullout system. Uh, since the, the the last one of the last videos that went out of me making this setup, I did it all at a time lapse. Uh, there weren't any measurements to look at, and when the video went out, there was that many uh, requests uh, for measurements and how it was done and what materials were used and things like that. And I didn't go that in depth in actually to making uh, this and how to measure it up and uh, put it together. And so I'm going to go into more detail as to what materials I've used. Um, where I've got them from, uh, little tips and tricks and things like that with this. So this is simply going to be focused on how to make this, how to make it to your motorhome or your camper van uh, and the sizes that you've got available and you can adapt it and use it to that. Because like I said, I haven't got any sizes as such for this um, because every one I tend to do seems to be different. So I, the, I'll show you the, the, the way that I set it up and how I make that out. Okay, so I've got both of these bed slats uh, in place now. Obviously, this is what they're going to look like when they're finished. I'm going to break one of these down uh, so you can see the actual construction of it, how things are put together and everything else. Um, what The reason I put them in this uh, in like this is just to show you as well. I've got two separate uh, pullouts here, and there's a reason for that. Um, this bed is, is when it's finished, when the cushions run, is going to be six foot four long, which is quite a long bench seat. Majority of them are going to be roughly about six foot long. Um, it's a seat, it's a bed as well at night time, so it's got to be that minimum of six foot. Um, whatever you do, and this is a bit of advice, I've got off experience as well, don't make your bed frame the full six foot long. Um, over time, I mean, it'll probably work great straight off, but over time, um, it will weaken and it will bend and you'll get things falling through and it's just not the way to go. I've always uh, split uh, these up, even on six foot, even some that have been smaller than that, I've always put two smaller ones in. It gives it that a lot more strength, a lot more rigidity, um, and it will last a hell of a long longer than it would do if you did a full six foot length one and it's not only that as well if you're in like for this this is a micro camper if you're in a tight space as well you're trying to pull a full uh six foot bed slats out as well you're going to struggle for room because obviously with this now i can pull that across and i can move out the way and get get the other one across you can't do that when it's a, a full six foot um so yeah uh, that's probably one of the first tips i would uh, give you on that side of things but what we'll do now i'll get this on the bench i'll strip it down and we'll start from scratch and i'll show you how to measure up and construct it as well okay so i've just taken the the bed slats off and what we're going to be making essentially is this it's two frames one that's going to slide in the other one. Um, if you notice, I don't know if you can do it here, there's a slot that's cut out at the front to allow that to happen, but I'll show you how that's put together when we, when we strip this frame down. Uh, the bed slats, uh, they're really strong beach bed slats, they're really nice uh, to work with. Uh, these are actually from Ikea. Um, they used, we used to, used to, I used to use a supply called uh, Hafle, I think it's pronounced, um, and they had a very similar uh, bed slat. They were a little bit wider, but they were a bit quite a bit thinner uh, and while they did give you that spring um, they, they, they weren't that um, how can I say they, they didn't give the strength that these give these are a better quality bed slat by far uh, they come in different lengths uh, I've had to cut these down the other thing that they do come with they come with a bit of webbing on the back so you've got to uh, take the, uh, the staples out and the webbing off for that but other than that these are far better bed slat well really do recommend them ones um, the timber itself um, like I said, we've got two frames. This middle, the inner frame, is made out completely of two by one. Uh, and I say two by one. The actual measurements of this is eighteen mil by forty-three, uh, and then we've got two by uh, well, sorry, a two by one, and then a three by one on the front of the. And again, I say. Um, I say three inches, but it's not. It's actually 60, about 68 mil. But <laughs> you give them what you give them there. So it's 2b1 and 3b1. Um, the majority of it is 2b1. So that inner frame there is completely 2b1. So you've got front, you've got your sides and your back. That's all 2b1. Um, the outer frame on this one, again, I'll show you when this is broken down. But you've got two lengths here, 2b1. 2 one at the back, a 2 by one there. It's just that one frame, that one length at the front there on your, your outer frame that's out of 3 by one and that's simply because we have to cut out there 
uh, I don't know if you can see, it comes around and it just gives it that strength underneath to allow that to happen. Otherwise, you've no way of making that into a solid frame. So that's, that's the construction on that, basically. Now then, the actual um, measurements, uh, they're pretty easy uh, to set up, to be honest with you, once you know your overall dimensions. So you need to know what length you need to make this. So, for example, if you're going up to, say, a wardrobe partition or a toilet partition down to the back doors or a, another partition, whatever, wherever you're placing this, for argument's sake, let's say that's six foot long. You don't, like I say, you don't want to make that the full six foot long. Um, you want to break this down into two. Um, on top of that, you also need clearance at this end, in the middle in between, and at the other end as well. So you don't want to make these two a full measuring up to six foot long. So uh, 72 inches, you probably want to knock off probably two inches of that. So that's going to bring that down then to 70 inches. So we're going to have that, we're on to 35, which funnily enough, this works out to be 35 inches wide. Um, so that's what we've got there. Um, the depth of it, um, is slightly slightly more difficult to weigh up. So what we'll do, we'll nip into the van and I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so um, we've gone through the, the length of it. If it's uh, 72 inches long, knock a couple inches off, leaving you with 70 inches, and then cut that in half and gives you the two bed slats at 35 inches long. Now then, um, when it comes to looking at the depth of it, you need uh, basically an L-shaped timber frame at the back there. Now this one is, for this one, it's further away. So normally this would be screwed straight through into your side wall, uh, your panelling. If you can reinforce that as well to make it nice and strong, that would be great. However, mine is coming slightly further away from the side because I haven't got a straight edge. I've got a door to contend with there as well, uh, as well as a tall wheel arch as well. So I've got some uh, some other extra strengthening rails under there, as you can see. Um, so you've got that. That's your first thing to, to measure to. Then you're going off the depth. Um, coming again towards this end here, you can either sit on the very edge, which is the knock and edging, which is, is nice and strong, and also you've got another timber rail which I've put on here, which mine is actually going to be sitting onto. That's glued and screwed onto there, that's still nice and strong. Um, you've got um, an extra 20 mil or whatever it was uh, to hang over there with the bed, so that's why I've set mine slightly further back. However, in the past, I have gone to this knock on edging because it's a nice strong piece as well, so it's entirely up to you depending on how you're constructing it. So, um, you're not going, like I say, to the wall, you're going to the inside of that rail, and that's where you first that's where you're starting from in your measurement. So, as you can see on that one, I'm looking at 17 and a half inches to the out, outer measurements of my frame on that one. So that's that's it basically. Um, you've got to make sure that rail's on first and you've got to know where that bed front is going to land. Um, rule of thumb, if you've not got anything um, in place at the minute uh, on a big bench seat setup, I normally do the cushion 27 inches deep because you're going to have a four or five inch backrest leaving you with what 20 23 22 inches base which is is more than ample really so rule of thumb i normally do a 27 inch base cushion usually set that frame in an inch or two at least um so you're looking either 25 or 26 inches from uh your, your back rail as well so uh that's just something to look at but again everybody's conversion is going to be different um and again this is different again because i'm not against uh, the, the side completely so yeah straight from from that back rail and then to your inner part where you're going to be um where you're going to be sitting it and that's how you're going to get your depth okay so i've separated the two frames i've got rid of the ball bearing runners on the side um on the runner side of things um i would fully recommend using some proper ball bearing runners you can use the draw runners um, you get a bit more noise from them. Um, they'll still do the job, but I have found over time they don't last as long as the ball bearing runner. So I would fully recommend using these ones. Um, a little trick, if you haven't used these before, if you fully extend, you'll see a little catch there that you can push in and you can remove part of that. So then you can uh, screw that to your inner frame and your outer frame separately if needs be, if you're struggling doing it all together. That's just another little thing if you haven't used them before. Right, okay, so the outer frame, we know that the length of it is going to be 35 inches long, 
which we've got. The depth from what we measured just inside there is 17 and a half inches. So we've got our overall full dimensions. Now the construction of this, like I said, is two by one. So we've got a full rail on the back there. We've got two pieces here screwed together. Uh, I don't know if you can see that on there. I've got them glued and screwed together. Uh, that's just to basically beef up them ends um, so we can get a decent size screw in there to attach them ball burr runners. Plus, also at the front there, it gives us a bit more wood to give us that extra bit of strength when, when, we, when we use it and when we're constructing it together and everything else. So we've got two pieces there. We've got two pieces there. Uh, we're screwed through from the back, glued and screwed straight through so there's no twisting on that. And again, the only part of 3B1 that's on this is on the front of this outer frame. Um, the cutout, as you can see, is, is basically flush with them two rails coming out there. And the depth of that is governed by the ball bearing runners. So basically, we're going to sit that on there because that's slightly wider than your 2B1. Uh, and that comes basically flush with the top there. So that, your depth for your cutout on that, um, you're starting off uh, the edge of that rail, you've got the depth of it being the ball bearing runner, and then the width is the ball bearing runner plus another frame. Um, so that's pretty easy to come up with really on that side of things. Um, so that's our outer frame, uh, and we're in a frame. Again, it's all made from 2 by one so you've got your back piece, you've got one single side and one single side on that side, and you've got a single front as well. So that's an easy construction, that one. There's no cutouts on that. Uh, Depth-wise, that rail is going to be cut to the same depth as that inner rail. Um, so obviously, when it comes together, it all sits together nice and flush, and everything's up and neat and everything else. The only one that you've really got to, uh, to measure is this back rail. Um, and what you've got to do, basically... Is whatever uh, bed run is using, whether it's these ball bearing ones or whether it's draw runners or whatever, whatever else you've got uh, to use. You basically put them two together, measure from either side and take that away from your inside measurement of this, uh, this outer frame. So whatever measurement you've got there, put them together, that's your measurement, deduct it and whatever you're left with, which is that, that's going to be the size of that back rail. Now, if you notice on here, that front rail is slightly smaller than that front rail. Uh, and there's a reason for that. It, it all depends on how you want to finish uh, your camper off. Now, I've got some fronts that are going to go on this. Decorative fronts that are basically going to be acting as legs. And when this comes across here, they're going to be rolling over. Now, if I'd have left that to the, to the very end, I wouldn't have had any chance to, to create a nice curve on that one so I've made them slightly smaller uh, but again it all depends on how you're going to be constructing this um, and that's 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 it basically on that side of things the other thing that I would say is when you're putting these together make sure you use um, some wood glue um, Gorilla Glue or anything like that that you've got uh, anything that's compatible with wood is great it's going to need the extra strength on it these are the screws I've been using uh, multi-purpose wood screws uh, these 40 mil ones are what I've been using going through the ends of there, which uh, are long enough once it's sunk in. Uh, you can use longer. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend going any thicker than that, the 3.5. I'd probably stick to that kind of uh, thickness of screw because you don't want to cause any problems with weakening it by making it too thick and it's splitting and things like that. So that's the kind of uh, size of screws I've been using. Um, I've dropped down to a 25mm to screw the bed slats in with. Uh, I'm down to, I think it's 19 or 20 mil for screwing uh, the ball bearing runners on, on, on that side of it as well so I don't pop through with the, with the screws as well so everything stays within the timber. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what we're looking at for that. Uh, one of the things I don't think I've pointed out yet is um, when you set your bed height, um, which a rule of thumb I normally do, so if you've got um, your L shape, support rail on the back there. I usually put a 13 mil staff at 13 mil, 13 inch staff underneath that and that's usually uh, the kind of height that I'm looking at. So from, from the, the level of the floor up to that point there is 13 inches, which I normally do it at. What you've got to take into consideration and remind yourself is when you come across to make your bed front, you've got a dip here. So you're gonna to have to measure what you've got there and then deduct or add on that part there to make your bed front so you don't uh, you don't get it either leaning back or, or leaning forwards. So just keep that in mind when you're making your bed front. It's going to be slightly different from what your rail at the back rail is.
Okay, so as we start to put this back together now, um, we're going to be putting the ball bearing runners on. Um, there's a couple of things that you, placement of this uh, is quite important. Uh, so obviously we, we've made that cut out the, the depth of this uh, bed's, uh, ball bearing runner. Uh, so we know that that's going to run level with the top of this bed, which is, is great. Uh, when you actually come to position it, you want it so it comes basically flush uh, with the front of this 3x1. Uh, there because as you pull that out that bit there that stopper actually goes on the inside of this other rail uh, So when that closes all this goes nice and neat together um, And you won't get any rattles or anything like that and it closes up nice and neat. So that's going to be going on to there like that um, When we come to this other one, this is going to be sitting on this point here and that bit that was telling you basically sits right up to the inside of that rail there uh, so when it all closes up, that comes together and everything's nice and neat. But we'll, uh, I'll set the camera up, set the time lapse up and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so once you've got the beds, um, the ball burning runners in place, screwed to the outer frame and the inner frame, so they're both interlinked now, just make sure that you've got a nice, easy glide, gliding motion. Uh, you don't want it too tight, you don't want it too slack, uh, you just want it so it's, it's, it slides in nice. Um, the other thing, if you are using draw runners, um, because this is on a slight incline, because obviously that 3B1's at the front and you've got 2B1's at the back, this is slightly leaning back. So when you pull that out, assuming you've got your measurements right, that should just glide back on its own. And if it does, that's perfect. That's what you want. But with the ball bearing runners, uh, you don't get that. You've, you've got to physically push it in. The other thing we're looking for as well is when you push it back, you get that click. And that stops that pulling across as well. So that, that for me, now that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So... Moving on to the bed slats, um, there is a way of measuring this up. So, for example, um, we're going to be going to this inner frame. So we've got a measurement there from the very edge to the very edge of the, which is 792 millimetres. Uh, these bed slats are 50 mil each, and they're going to be placed like this. So you've got one on your inner frame, and then we're going to link that to the outer frame. Can you see how it's stepped back? And then we've got another one coming across like that. So what we're going to do, we're going to place them across like so. And again, every one you do, stagger it to one to the other. So it's like a zigzag effect, if you will. Um, place them out and see how many roughly you think uh, you're going to need. Um, you don't want too much of a gap. You want it pretty close, to be honest, uh, to give you that extra support and strength. Um, and you, you're only finishing on this this frame, this this inner frame. You don't want to go on the outer frame. Um, so you're only on you're starting basically on the inner frame like that. Now for this one, we're looking at 13 slats. That's nice, nicely spread out. And there's a, a good amount of slats on there. Um, so if we've got 13 slats at 50 mil a piece, that's 650 mil. Our overall width from there to there is 792 millimeters so we'll take the 650 away from that leaving us with 142 millimeters in total now if we go across that way these gaps here this is what we're counting up and there's going to be 12 gaps there's 13 slats and 12 gaps so we've got that 142 millimeters and we're going to divide that by the 12 and that leaves us with 11.83 millimeters but for argument's sake we're going to say 12 millimeters so the easiest thing for me to do is get some 12 milli ply and just put a piece of 12 milli ply each time you go down um as you get to the middle obviously that's going to close up a little bit because we're out by um point uh, 17 mil i think it is um so you're going to do say three or four on this side and then three or four on this side and then work your way to the middle because that center one will be um the gap so you've got uh, 12 mil either side might be a little bit closer well that's the only thing that you've that you've got to look out for start at one side come 
so far in and then start at your other side and then work towards the middle and then you'll be able to centralize that final slat um so yeah i'll set the camera up and we'll get these uh, these bed slats screwed up again Right, okay, so we've got all the slats back on. Always give it one last try, make sure everything is still working as it should do. That seems perfect to me, that one. And one of the last things that you probably want to put on, on this is probably some butt hinges on the back. And what that'll do, uh, that'll obviously give you that uh, point where you can attach to that back that back rail um, and obviously once that's uh, screwed down obviously it's not going to move anywhere but it also gives you that ability to lift these bed slats up and down to, so you can gain access to the storage part under your bed so let's get this in the van and have a look okay so we've got the uh, bed frames back in now I've got a couple of screw tacked in at the back uh, stop it moving about so literally as you can see it's effortless to, to set up uh, really easy system and again with them hinges on the back you can gain access to under this I mean at the front here there isn't um, there is a, a door at the back there um, but there isn't one on the front but it's so easy to just lift up and gain access underneath um, on the front of here is going to be one of these other side and that they are the support legs basically um, they're quite decorative obviously it's made out of the, uh, the furniture board That'll attach to that to that rail there, either from the back or through the front, probably from the back to be honest, so you don't see any screws. Got that glued and screwed on there. But um, that's what uh, that's what we're looking like. Um, I hope I've covered everything uh, that everybody's asked, uh, questions about measurements and the way it's constructed and things like that. If I have missed anything, please let me know. I'll get back to you as soon as possible with uh, with your with your answers. Um, like I say, it was um, the first video I did on the beds was just more of a time lapse thing. So I hope this has gone more in depth for you. Um, but um, many thanks for watching. Um, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye bye.